Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor Thomas Goss, with some advice about scoring the oboe's highest register. There are some general approaches to the oboe's range that you'll see in most scores. The lowest fifth or so will be used mostly for powerful notes, while the middle octave gets most of the melodic action. Above the staff, the oboe tends to support the strings, making up for its relative weakness in that register with a fine blending tone. Or, especially in older classical scores, you'll see oboe scored as the top note of a chord with the other winds and horns, for a very warm sounding harmony. But then there are times when a composer breaks the rules and helps reveal something about an instrument that perhaps even most players didn't suspect. A great example of this is the stratospheric oboe solo from the start of Ravel's ballet score to Daphnis and Chloe. It takes a great amount of virtuosity to play effectively. Up in this highest register of the oboe, every move is fraught with peril. The attack on the first note has to avoid turning into a squeak or hitting too hard. And yet a lot of air and loose embouchure is needed. But that's only the beginning. Each successive repetition might suddenly drop out unless well-defined and articulated. At this height, the lower notes of C-sharp and E suddenly become perfectly reasonable. But the difference in intonation between these notes and the first F is difficult to finesse. Finally, Ravel counterintuitively goes up and over the F to diminuendo out on an E-flat. That is the toughest bit of them all to manage well. Let's take a look at that again along to the score. Look at the energy being expended by the player just to make these few bars sound effortless. Interestingly, Sam Adler's orchestration text calls this range pinched and ineffective. Here Ravel proves him wrong, but only with the best players in the world. This extreme range can be used in an effective solo, but at a price. One must allow the oboist to prepare, then give him plenty of time to recover. And this register should only be scored if the composer knows with certainty, like Ravel, that the players will be world class, and even at that, it's better not to compose something like this more than once or twice in a lifetime. In Ravel's case, it meant that his solo would be something that whole pages of text would be written about respectfully. That's the best confirmation of your own craft as a composer, that some difficult bit of scoring is seen as something worth doing, and welcomed as a challenge rather than dismissed as bad writing. Last week, I've been posting daily tips about the oboe on the Orchestration Line Facebook page and Twitter. You can link to those tips in the sidebar below, which I strongly recommend. Don't let the oboe be the weakest instrument that you score. Make it one of the strongest. Join me here on Orchestration Online next week for a discussion of wolf tones on the cello. Hope to see you then.